Hello everyone. Hi guys, uh, you're about to watch our house tour video. Uh, but before you do, we would like uh, to thank you guys for all your support over the last year. Uh, our channel, Building the Philippines, is just a year old. Uh, in fact, it's not even a year old. We started our channel at the end of July of last year. July 27th. July 27th. So it's not even a year old yet. So I'd just like to thank everybody for uh, subscribing and uh, watching our videos. So the first two years here, and we've been in the Philippines now for two years. Uh, our two-year anniversary is coming up uh, next week. And it's been a roller coaster ride for sure. Uh, we uh, arrived in Manila, had to quarantine uh, because we arrived in the middle of the uh, pandemic for 10 days. And then we were off to Leyte where Wilma's family was. So we got a chance to visit. Uh, and then we had a lot of things to do. We had to arrange our banking. Uh, we had to buy a scooter. We bought a truck, uh, you know, and started to uh, settle in. And then we went on our quest to find land. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was, uh, it was work. It took us almost a year, 11 months, uh, to find this piece of property. So we took our time, went all over Leyte. And most of you know the story. Then we branched out to Cebu. Uh, then we went to Bohol and then a little island off of uh, Bohol named Panglo Island. Uh, and then eventually to Negros Oriental. So we did get a chance to see... Uh, five islands and uh, we lived out of a suitcase for a while uh, and you know it was just uh, what we wanted to do we wanted to take our time uh, to find property uh, where we could build our dream house and we found it here in Dawin Negros Oriental uh, so the first year was really just our search for land then the second year, a uh, little less than a year, was all about building. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why we named our channel Building the Philippines. So it was all about buying this piece of property and then, of course, attorneys and getting it titled and deed of sale and navigating all through that. Um, and that was an education uh, for Wilma and I as well. And then we had to meet with architects uh, and contractors and design the home. And most of you know the story, but there may be a lot of you here that are new uh, to our channel and don't know the backstory. So the first two years, uh, we've been very, very busy. Uh, but we're just getting started, guys. We're very, very excited. We are relaxing a little bit because we've been so busy. Uh, again, for two years now, uh, we've been on the go, uh, doing this, doing that, and finally have... Uh, what we think is a dream home here in Dowen. So I uh, hope you enjoy the video. Um, our channel is uh, going to take some twists and turns. Uh, we hope that you uh, watch this home tour and then uh, decide to subscribe. Uh, we do appreciate if you would hit the like button for this video because it's a little different video and uh, we really appreciate uh, your support in hitting the like button. And then if you could also share this video, because it's considered one of our premium videos, uh, share it on your like, uh, Facebook page with your friends. And that's a real good way of getting our video in front of people that never seen us before. And then they can consider subscribing. So again, if you're not subscribed, uh, we would ask you to do so. And uh, we really hope you enjoy our house tour video. We, we are, are building, building the Philippines. Philippines. Welcome, Welcome to, to our, our home. home. Hi, guys. Hello, everyone. So, uh, long awaited costing video. Uh, looking forward to bringing it to you guys. But first, I want to personally thank Alex Kosh. Uh, he has his own YouTube channel. You guys should check it out uh, for helping us with this video. So the big question is, uh, why are we doing a costing video? Yeah, why are we doing this? <laughs> <laughs> We're doing this to help you guys out. When we started this channel, uh, geez, it's got to be eight months ago, maybe even nine months ago when we first bought the property. And if you guys remember for the long time viewers, um, it was all about uh, documenting 
our journey of building our retirement home here in Dowen, Negros Oriental. Uh, and uh, we really wanted to document it for ourselves, for our family, and our friends. Uh, and the channel grew uh, much larger than we thought. Now, we're still a relatively small channel. Very small. Uh, we're a small channel, but nonetheless, we're very, very happy and surprised how you guys have accepted us. And there's a lot of conversation back and forth. We get a lot of comments, a lot of emails, a lot of Facebook messengers from what we call kind of a, a coined phrase, the 10 percenters, right? We are one of the 10 percenters. And really what that means is, you know, two people in a long-term relationship who wants to move to the Philippines and build their own dream home. Uh, a lot of people here uh, rent and that's fantastic. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but a smaller majority uh, wants to buy property and build their own home. And that's what we did several months ago. So uh, we wanted to be able to help you guys uh, make some decisions because no one looks out for your retirement dollars uh, more than yourself. Isn't that true? That is true. And we have a budget and we have to be careful with the money that we have. So our total budget was $150,000 US, US dollar. So that was our budget that we're starting off with. And our goal was to achieve that and not go over. So through this video, we're going to talk to you about where we spent our money. And then at the end, what was our total spend? So we very much love this house. Very much. It's our design. It's yeah. ours. <laughs> this is our designed home. We love the area. We love the people here. And it's been a journey for sure. So has it been perfect? Of course not. There has been uh, stressful days. And that is another thing that we want to make sure that you guys understand. When you think about buying land and building a house, you know, all the ups and downs, the good times, the bad times, you know, the stress that you will feel. Um, but it's definitely doable and you can overcome it if you uh, take your time and do the right thing. So the next question is, who should build a home here in the Philippines. Now, this is my advice, so don't listen to me, uh, but I think it really should be someone who's married, who's in a committed relationship, because as everybody knows, a foreigner cannot own land in the Philippines. And you do hear of some stories where that does go bad. So that would be the first thing, is be very, very cautious uh, of where you build, and the fact that you understand that the title of the home, of the property, will be in hopefully your wife's name uh, and just not your girlfriend. So that would be the first advice. But we wanna go ahead and give you guys uh, a real good in-depth look at our home and what things cost. So stay tuned. All right guys, so uh, I have my notes and uh, we'll go ahead and start going through uh, the costing of uh, each item. So first up is the land. The land. Right, <laughs> so uh, obviously you have to have a piece of land before you can build. Uh, so like I said before, uh, we think we did really good. You guys have seen the views of this property. Uh, we really love it. Um, it has a good source of water, good source of electricity. Uh, so we feel like we really found a gem. Um, it took only seven months for the title to transfer into uh, Wilma's name. Uh, so, you know, that's always something that you have to consider, uh, that it's not going to be delayed for, uh, for any reasons. So the land was ready to be built upon and everything went very, very smooth. So uh, we bought this property for 1.8 million pesos. Uh, which is 32727 U.S. dollars. Now, let me explain a little bit about the conversion. Uh, obviously, over the course of the eighth month of build, we would transfer money over a little at a time. So the first chunk that we sent over from the U.S. was 52 pesos uh, to the American dollar. But then uh, another large chunk was at 56 and then we did the last uh, chunk of money at 59. So I'm using an average of 55. 55. 
55 uh, pesos to American dollar because that's about the average that we transferred over. Now we budgeted at 50, so we were very lucky that the uh, dollar was strong um, during the time that we actually was transferring money over. So just so you guys know, we used 55 uh, pesos to the American dollar. But remember, the ultimate goal was for us to build this home uh, from beginning to end for 150,000 US dollars. That was the ultimate goal. So the property itself was 1.8 million. Now, uh, when it comes to uh, titling the land and the lawyer fees and all the capital gain tax, all that we grouped together. So the lawyer, all the taxes, getting it uh, titled, everything was 144,000 pesos or $2,618. That was all in. We did nothing. Uh, we allow our attorney to do everything. Yes. Uh, even uh, taking care of the BIR or standing in line to, to process the mm -hmm. paperwork. Uh, we hired him and his team to do that for us. So that was included in that cost of 144,000 pesos. So the entire land was about 36,000 to get it completely uh, titled. So then we had to find an architect. And you guys know that we uh, interviewed uh, three architects and we think we really found a great architect. And again, we wanted him to handle everything. So uh, not only did he design this home, uh, got it the blueprint, he handled all the permits. All the permits. All filling out the paperwork, going back and forth uh, to the municipal, mm -hmm. uh, dealing with all the different uh, costs with that, entails with that. Uh, he took care of our water hookup. Mm -hmm. uh, he took care of our electrical hookup and all the fees and, and different things that needs to be done. So he handled everything for us. Uh, he charged uh, 80,000 pesos uh, or $1,454. So that's not bad. So now we got to the point of building the home itself. And here is, I think you guys are going to see that we did very, very well. So the house itself, um, and you guys have seen it many, many times. It's a modern style home. Um, it has 12 foot ceilings in the main area, 10 foot ceilings. It's a three bedroom, two bath. Um, you know, we think the house is just fantastic. The contractor did a fantastic job. Uh, we paid 3.3 million pesos for the home. For the home. Um, and that is 60,000 US dollars. Uh, to me, that's staggering no. uh, because you could never do that in the U.S. for that price. No. So the house, 3.3 million pesos. Uh, so now on to the pool. Um, our pool is 5 meters by 10 meters, 4 foot deep by 6 foot deep. Now, if you measure the pool uh, because of uh, the layers of concrete and the tiling, it's actually 4.75 meters by 9.75 meters, uh, just to be exact. Um, and then it has the water feature and it's fully tiled. The walls of the pool is tiled, the floor is uh, tiled, uh, the steps itself is all tiled. So completely tiled, which there's added cost for that. We paid 800,000 pesos for the pool or $14,545. Uh, the fence, gotta have a fence in the Philippines. <laughs> so as you guys know, uh, the fence is seven foot high on the sides, 10 foot high in the back. And then you know the front has the metal going across with the gate. So the entire fence was 800,000 pesos, same as the pool. Yes. Um, and that was $14,545. Uh, we thought it was important uh, to have a fence. Uh, most people who build homes here do have fences around their property and uh, you know we just wanted that added security uh, we didn't want it to be too high on the sides or in the front that's why we have the metal uh, part of the fence in the front so you can see through and we didn't want to obstruct any views mm -hmm. and then uh, for visitors we didn't want to have where we can't see a visitor is coming up to the gate so that's why we have that uh, the way it is in the front so uh, we're glad that we did it now there was a lot of rocks on the property. <laughs> a lot of rocks. <laughs> a lot of rocks. So we, uh, this was unbudgeted. 
So uh, we needed to bring in a very large excavator uh, to do a lot of the uh, moving of the rocks. You know, we built that very large rock wall, dug the pool, dug the foundation for the house, dug the trench for the fence. Um, that cost us because the contractor did pay for part of it mm -hmm. um, because I saved him labor from having to dig the pool, for example. Uh, so he did pay part of the excavation, but our cost was 165,000 pesos or $3,000 for uh, excavation. And that wasn't budgeted. No. <laughs> uh, so that was an added cost. So I think it's important at this point of this conversation to say, um, I've been in business for 30 years. I ran distribution centers all over the country and I always made my own budgets and I had to stick to the budget. Very, very important uh, for a company that you represent that you make budget. So as you guys know, our budget was $150,000. So we were not going to go over. Um, it just wasn't going to happen. I wasn't going to allow it to go uh, over budget. So whenever there was an increase in something, something else decreased. Yes. That's just the way it is. <clears throat> Wilma was fine with that. Mm -hmm. So if we went over $3,000 in excavation. We needed to find that $3,000 somewhere else. We didn't uh, just say, we'll just go over budget and we'll just spend $153,000 on the house. Um, it's kind of a, a game with me, so to speak. Um, but I wanted to stick. Uh, to our budget for various reasons. So unfortunately that was not budgeted, but it was necessary and we glad we did it because we were able to uh, really uh, accelerate the landscaping and there was just a lot of rocks in the way. There was too many. Yeah, there was just a lot of rocks. So that is the, the main build. Now there was two different categories. Uh, the contract extras, the contractor extras, and then our costs for the things that we did that wasn't part of the original contract. So we had a contract drawn up with the contractor for the house, the fence, and the pool. Um, and we did go over on a couple of things. So the way it worked, and I also want to say the contractor that we used was very easy to work with. When we came up with said, hey, we want to change this, we want to change that, there was certain items that he said, I can absorb that, I'm okay with that. But then there was certain items where he came back and said, no, that's going to uh, be too much money. Um, you know, you need to pay. If you want to do that particular item, you're going to have to pay for that. And we were fine with that because we were under contract. So the next two categories is things that we had the contractor do for us, that was an added cost above and beyond the contract. Uh, and I was so comfortable with him, it was a handshake um, and it worked out fine. And then the lot of the specifics here in my notes is the things that we did. So we'll get into that. So the contractor extras was 160,000 pesos above our contract. Uh, that was $2,909. And this is what entailed in that 160,000 pesos. You guys know that we did a solid driveway, so we uh, had to pay extra for that. Our dirty kitchen wall uh, was originally supposed to be eight feet high, according to plan, and we went 10 feet high. So obviously that additional two feet we had to pay for. Then you guys also remember, uh, we decided late to build a wall on the one side of our dirty kitchen. So that was uh, all that uh, concrete and the hollow block and the steel and the window that's there. Uh, that was an extra. Uh, the patio around the pool, uh, not the two meter overhang, but the actual concrete around the pool, uh, that was extra. Uh, the, the carport concrete, uh, you guys remember the ceiling in the utility room? Mm -hmm. Something that Wilma wanted yes. <laughs> uh, because it looked like the carport was just the steel. Uh, she wanted to enclose that in, so that was an extra. Um, the water feature of the pool wasn't part of the original blueprint, so that water feature. Um, and then the seven uh, electrified lights on the columns in front of the house and all the electric that runs down the uh, driveway to electrify those lights, that wasn't part of the electrical plan, so we had to pay for that. So all that together 
was 160,000 pesos. So now everything else. Everything else. <laughs> wow. Appliances uh, slash uh, everything else. furniture. Yeah, furniture and all that. So the reason why we're getting to this much detail is we're trying to help you guys understand because obviously if you build a house in the Philippines and you're coming from another country, you need furniture, right? So that's an expense. So we figured we'd just share uh, what we paid. So if we group everything together, uh, we paid 542,000 pesos or $9,854, a lot of money. Uh, for everything else, but this is what was included in the everything else our generator We wanted a generator not every house here has a generator. Mm -hmm. We wanted a generator for brownouts our refrigerator our stove our couch uh, four air cons in the house uh, That we never use but we wanted to have uh, four air cons one in the main living room one in the master bedroom within each of the two spare uh, bedrooms. So four air cons, uh, television, our transformer, which was a big cost. A big cost of that. We were surprised how much a transformer cost. We paid 87,000 pesos just for the transformer. Uh, but it does give real clean, steady power at 220 into the house with no surges. So it's, it's well worth it. Um, our walk-in closet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was, a, was an extra. Uh, then, of course, the china cabinet, the buffet, uh, the stools that you see right behind us, and then all the landscaping, all the rocks, the many, many loads of rocks, uh, all the uh, plants, um, and the labor. Remember, Jernell did all our landscaping, and we paid his salary for many, many uh, months. So all that uh, grouped together was uh, 542,000 pesos. So you total it all up. <laughs> Here's the grand total. Don't know if you guys were taking notes or not. Uh, we built everything. Everything that I just said, soup to nuts, was $141,652 or $8,348 under budget. Yes. Yes. We were under budget. We were under budget. So what that means to me in the business world, I get a very big bonus at the end of the year. That's how it works. <laughs> uh, so we did come under budget. And uh, if you translate that to uh, pesos, uh, it's just under 7.8 million pesos. 7.791. So call it 7.8 million pesos. So we built our dream home here in Negros Oriental. Negros in Dowen, beautiful view, uh, we love the area, it's very quiet up here, um, there's going to be a lot of nice neighbors eventually in this subdivision, uh, the house is plenty big for us, 168 square meters, plenty big, three bedrooms, two bath, a beautiful swimming pool that's just a couple of meters from the house, you've guys seen it many many times, for under 7.8 million pesos. So that is the specifics. Um, we're very glad to bring that to you. And for all our friends and all our viewers out there who are thinking about uh, building a home in the Philippines, you can do it. Um, you have to use caution. And I think we can do some subsequent uh, videos about that, how to be cautious, because there is challenges and you do hear of stories where people uh, overrun their budget, have issues, um, and it's you know very hard to hear. Uh, we have several friends, and we're hearing about them right now, mm -hmm. that they're in the middle of a build and having issues. And we were lucky. Uh, we picked the right attorney, we picked the right architect, and we picked the right contractor. We got very, very lucky. Um, we think part of that is our interviewing skills the fact that we <laughs> interviewed three to four for each category we did some due diligence um, but even then uh, there can be issues um, but we were very lucky with the people we chose yes. you know part of uh, you know doing a good job or leadership is surrounding yourself with good people um, and we've done that and we've also surrounded ourselves with some really good friends and we've settled in here nicely so we hope that 
this video will help you, give you a little better understanding of how much things cost here in 2022, 2023, as we built over those two years. Um, we were happy to bring you this information. If you have any specific questions, which you already do, <laughs> we get a lot of comments, a lot of emails, but if you guys want uh, any contact information or any specific questions, uh, probably best to email us. Email. Right? Email us at buildingthephilippines at gmail.com and we'll do our best uh, to give you guys the answer. Now again, we're not the experts. Uh, you can say that you know part of this build was luck. Um, I think the timing was good. We got in here, like I said earlier, right before they opened up uh, to uh, foreigners. We came in on a ballot buy on visa, so before Taurus was allowed here. So I think we caught the beginning of uh, when the cost starting to go up. Yes. But I think if we built this house today, a year later, it probably would cost more uh, than what we paid because we were right on that cusp. And then someone that built five years ago would tell us the same story that they built cheaper five years ago. So prices are not going down. No, it just keep going up, especially for the price of the land. Yeah. Okay guys, I have several questions for you. How did you end up in the Philippines? Well, I come from the Philippines. <laughs> yeah, obviously. Yeah, that's uh, pretty obvious. I'm actually, I uh, came from uh, Leyte. That's, my, that's where I was born and raised. Oh, yeah. Yeah, when we uh, first got together as a couple and then we were married in the U.S., uh, Wilma always said, you need to come to the Philippines and visit. And obviously, I wanted to meet her family. Uh, so our first trip, I believe, was 2004. We came to the Philippines and uh, we really had a great time. Yeah, it's uh, I really fell in love with the Philippines. And then over the next several years, uh, about every four years, we would come visit. Now, you guys know, the longtime viewers, that Wilma built a dream house for her parents. She lived and worked in the U.S. and sacrificed and sent money home for her parents to buy land and to build their own dream home. So we had a master bedroom, a bath, and a, and a little porch area for us. And the plan was, the original plan, was for us to stay in the U.S. and just travel back and forth, say every four years, and just visit. And we typically would stay about three weeks. Three weeks into four weeks, yes. Yeah, about three to four weeks at a time. Uh, but then, uh, I think it was my fourth trip uh, to the Philippines, and we got back to the U.S. And a lot of the longtime viewers already know this, uh, you know, know this story. Uh, but basically, I said to Wilma, and I think it was around 2012, I said to Wilma, would you like to retire in the Philippines because I think I would like to move there? And then that's when we put together our 10-year plan. 10 years plan, yes. We had a 10-year plan uh, to save money and to work towards uh, retiring early. Now, I happened to be 45 at that time, so that put me at 55 years old uh, to retire early. So that is uh, early. But that was our plan. That was the plan. And uh, we decided to, uh, to move here. And because of the pandemic, we made the 10-year plan a nine-year plan. And uh, we, got a, we got out of Dodge one year early. Uh, and we're glad we did because, as you'll find out with this uh, costing video, uh, we believe we saved money uh, because we got here before tourism opened up. And we knew that there wasn't a lot of real estate being bought and sold during the pandemic. So part of our plan was to get here as early as possible because we knew once tourism opened up that uh, a lot of foreigners would rush in here that wasn't here for two to three years yeah. uh, and start buying up land and building homes. So we wanted to get on the very front end of that. So that was very strategic on our part. And I think it saved us a lot of money. It saved us a lot of money with the materials and uh, the cost of the property. Yeah, absolutely. So that's the answer. Yeah, yeah I can uh, only say that uh, a year ago I came here 
and it was hardly to meet any foreigners on the street. Yeah. Really hardly. But now you just go on a boulevard and you can meet, meet, meet I don't know, 100 uh, in one day. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, on their the amount of foreigners that are here today as compared to a year or two years ago yeah. is much different. Yeah. So it was a very strategic move uh, on our end. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you have guys any regrets? Ooh, regrets. Do I oh. have, do we have any regrets? No. No regrets. No regrets. Uh, the answer for me is no. Um, is there's always opportunities for things to be better? Of course. Uh, but do we have any regrets as husband and wife retiring early mm -hmm. to a tropical island, uh, building our own home the way we wanted it built, uh, and enjoy the back half of our life? No regrets at all. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Uh, what advice do you have for foreigners thinking about to build a house in the Philippines? Yeah, that's that's a good question. Um, you guys know, you know, one of the main reasons for us to have this channel uh, was to document our dream home build for us and for our family and friends. But quickly we understood once more and more people started subscribing and watching our channel that we could be a resource to help. Um, of course, we don't have all the answers, we're not experts uh, by any stretch of the imagination, uh, but we felt that we could at least assist some people, and that's what has happened. Yes. I coined that phrase, the 10 percenters, mm -hmm. and we've had a lot of very nice couples visit our site, some great conversations, and basically all of them has either bought land in this area and is getting ready to build, or they're thinking about buying property. Mm -hmm. They're not exactly sure if this greater Dumaguete area is gonna be the area that they wanna settle, but they wanted to check it out. So, uh, you know, a big part of our channel is to kind of show you guys that you can do it, and you can do it within a budget, and uh, do your best to, uh, you know, save as much money as possible. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what does your future hold for you guys? Our future. Our future is looking up for sure. Um, now that we have settled in um, and the house is complete, now it's time to start really uh, enjoying our retirement. So we've been here, and you guys know, most of you, that about two years. We're coming up on our two year anniversary. Next month. Next month, yes. here in the, in the Philippines. And we've been on the go. Just on the go. <laughs> on the go for two years. Yeah. The first year was traveling and trying to find property. We went to five different islands and we decided to, to build our home here in Negros Oriental uh, in the greater Dumaguete area. Uh, so we were very busy living out of a suitcase and trying to find land, which it seems like we were looking at land uh, basically every other day. Uh, and then this next year uh, has been building this home. And uh, we've been very, very, uh, involved in this build, uh, making sure we are here every day. Uh, we moved into this home on day 184, um, so just a little over six months. Now, it wasn't 100% completed, but it was move-in ready, uh, day 184. And we were here on site 181 days out of 184. Mm. So that shows a commitment. Um, that we wanted to make sure that uh, we were very involved in this home build. And that would be probably a, a very good recommendation to make. Uh, do your best if you're going to build a home in the Philippines. Just because things are different here, uh, try to be on site as much as possible. Yeah. yeah. And you can know each detail from your house. You know what can go wrong, what you need to... Yeah, having that tribal knowledge of... Uh, being here and we watched our home be built yeah. so it wasn't just about uh checking for quality it yeah. was just to be here and experience it and uh, we're glad that we put that investment in because we know every inch of this property mm -hmm. and we know how well this house was built uh and uh it just feels good it's ours i have one more question guys for you one what more. makes you happy uh, each other having okay. each other uh, that's a good, it's that's really a good answer. Yeah, I, I, answer. I can't improve on that. <laughs> nah, it's true. Uh, and I think I said this on uh, other videos. Uh, this means nothing really. We have a great view, beautiful pool,
beautiful house. We really do love the house that we built, but it really means nothing without my wife. It means nothing. It's brick and mortar, as yeah. they say. So, uh, you know, to share the back half of our life together um, and the fact that we're in a committed relationship. Uh, we've been married for many, many years. Uh, again, none of this means anything without sharing it with my wife. So you answered that very fast. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great. <laughs> that was a that was a fast answer, but yeah, absolutely true. So uh, now I appreciate the five questions. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for answering my questions. <laughs> yeah, and thank you for having me here. Yeah. Thank you, Alex. Yeah, thanks, Alex. Thank you guys it. for watching too. Yes. Yeah. See you.